Find the scenes look at your favorite fast food places. Olivia will be telling us if homework is really beneficial to our learning. We're going to hear about everything Christmas. And we'll take a look into the upcoming winter sports with Miles. Catch all this and more on today's episode of Cedar Springs TV Live. Whatever happened to predictability? The milkman, the paper boy, evening TV. Did I get delivered here? Somebody tell me, please. This whole world confusing me. Maddie, how are you today? You know, I'm fantastic. Do you have any plans for the upcoming break? Uh, not really. I'll probably just stay home and drink hot chocolate. How about you? Well, I'm just looking forward to spending time with family and getting time off from work. Ugh, can't relate. It must be nice having time off, though. Where do you work? Wendy's. It's not too bad, but sometimes cleaning can get annoying. Let's check out what other people do to keep their restaurants clean. The fast food industry is one of the most profitable business in America. Americans alone spend about $20 million on fast food. We already know that consuming fast food is unhealthy, but is the workplace unsanitary? Well, I work at Subway, so whenever I'm there, I eat fast food, which is most of the time. Um, maybe once a week if I like work and have a break. I eat fast food almost every single day. It's not healthy, but I do it. <laughs> I would definitely eat the food that I served. I think that it is very well prepared and I think that we take very good precautions to make sure that that food is temperatured as it should be. Uh, yeah, I would eat the food that I serve just because it's good quality food. The food we serve at KFC is like clean and like actually done pretty well. I do have their food on like breaks and stuff, but it's not good for you at all. Any fast food item most likely has a human hair cooked into it. Reportedly, an average fast food consumer will eat about 12 public hairs unnoticed. So what is the standard on hair in these working environments? If you have hair longer than your shoulders at Subway, you're supposed to wear your hair up in a bun. Uh, no, we do not have to wear hair up, but we wear a hat, so. I do have to wear my hair up, but it's not like in a hair net or anything. It just has to be like in a ponytail in your cap. We know fast food products has lots of grease and excess food. So how do employees clean up the utensils and dispose of the food? It is very clean at Subway. We make sure that everything is very clean. If it's not clean, then it needs to be picked up right away. It's actually so boring to work there that we have a cleaning list that we get done every day. So it's just like sparkly clean. Uh, the cleanliness of our workplace is actually really good. Um, they keep up on it every day. It is very clean at my workplace if I clean it. The utensils we use are definitely not clean. The floors are clean, not the dishes. <laughs> when we go out of date on a food, we are supposed to put it in this bin, we're supposed to mark it off on a list, and then we throw it away. The food that we don't use, um, yeah, we throw it away, but like it, it counts over, or like it adds up over time, and then it just it's like a waste of money. Throw all of it away, except for the chicken. We uh, like debone it, we use those for like chicken nuggets or something, but if it's not like big pieces of chicken, we like take the skin off of it too and like shred it up and put it in the pot pie. So like you're eating day old chicken. Overall, it's clear that by far KFC is downright sickening and gross. Subway by far is the healthier alternative. However, making and eating food in your own home is best and healthiest. Uh, don't eat at KFC. Just don't do it. <laughs> Jeez, cleaning is annoying. But you know what else is annoying? Homework. What do you mean? Well, all of the teachers here at Cedar Springs are great. But I already know I'm going to have a ton of homework over break, and I just don't get why it's necessary. I mean, it's called a break for a reason. Man, I hit homework too, but there's got to be a reason. Why don't we send it over to Olivia, who's going to tell us if there's a limit to how much homework students can endure. For many years, the question, is lots of homework beneficial, has been discussed. Some believe that too much homework can harm the student rather than help. We have gone out and interviewed three students and three teachers to get their opinion on the subject. Uh, I don't think homework is beneficial to the students, a lot of it at least, because it just puts a lot of stress on the students. I do not ever do my homework. I do most of the time. I do my homework. So. 
Um, sometimes it depends on if the teacher is like collecting the homework or grading it. Most classes it's about an hour of homework every night. Homework I get assigned is about an hour every night with all my classes. Like 15 to 20 minutes worth for like three different classes. Um, most teachers should assign homework, but just not a lot of it. Uh, a lot of it will put more stress on the students, but a little bit of homework will help learn the material more. Um, I don't think they should, teachers should assign a lot of homework just every once in a while to make sure the students are paying attention in class. I do not think that all teachers should assign homework. I don't necessarily think a lot of homework is beneficial, but I think some homework really on a daily basis, whether it's given in class time and give you enough time to work in class. Not a big fan of homework personally. Uh, a lot of extracurricular activities. Uh, people have jobs, family issues. Uh, the percentage of students that typically complete homework, I would say, man, less than 50 percent. Um, I think each class varies depending on the class. Um, I would think completes it at 100 percent, um, probably in my class probably about 40. Um, Not very many. Uh, when I do assign, you know, I'd roughly say between 25 and 35 uh, percent. It's just definitely limited. I don't think teachers should um, assign lots of homework. Uh, I think it has to be manageable and I think the homework assignments need to make sense. No, I don't think they should assign a lot of homework. I think it, each subject varies and it's different depending on what your your subject is. Again, I leave that up to the individual teacher. I'm not in charge of them. They have their own curriculum that they must follow. So uh, every class is different, especially when you get to the AP classes. You know, if you've chosen AP, I think you, you, you run into a different gauntlet than what you do with just your normal class. In conclusion, opinions seem to vary between students and teachers, and the question whether or not lots of homework is beneficial will still be a heavily debated topic. I still hate homework. Me too and I have a hard time finding enough time to do it all. It's hard to balance my extracurriculars and homework. Yeah, just imagine being an athlete, having two hour practices and having to do your homework. And with winter sports getting into gear, there's gonna be a lot of stressed athletes. How about checking on your time and making sure you're still doing your homework? Here's a recap of some of our recent winter events. Last Thursday, the freshman boys took a victory as they beat Comstock Park 50-46. to Last night, the JV boys got their first victory of the season as they defeated Kent City 62-49. to And afterward, the varsity boys won in a thrilling fashion as Trent Cooper hit the game-winning three to defeat Kent City 50-47. to Moving on to freshman girls, they beat Zeeland West 18-17, to and JV girls last night beat Muskegon Oak Ridge 20-17. The varsity girls lost to Mesquite and Oak Ridge in a tough battle as they lost 50-45. to Last Saturday at the Red Hawk Invite, girls bowling placed fifth and the boys placed eighth. Also, the wrestling team took fifth overall. However, Ryan Ringler took first and Trevor Marsman and Lucas Patton took second. In cheer, uh, the varsity took first and the uh, JV took fourth. Now with the recap of those winter sports, let's send it to Miles where he'll have a deeper look at our winter sports programs. Thanks, Ryan. I'm Miles Cartwright with CSTV Sports. Today, I'm sitting down with the boys and girls varsity basketball and competitive cheer, seeing on how their season is going. So far, boys and girls varsity basketball and cheer haven't met the expectations and goals that we thought would have happened, but there is still plenty of games and meets for our Red Hawks to get the dub. To get my body in shape, I try like running helps and like uh, lifting weights and stuff like that. Uh, I just run a lot and consistently drink water. Uh, I consistently work. I had a trainer this off season for just getting my body right and just shoot a lot. Uh, everyone's just really competitive and uh, working hard. Coach is yelling. We're all yelling, going full speed. Just the competitiveness in it and like teamwork and everyone just kind of gets on each other to be better. Um, well, we usually start out with ball handling for practice, and then uh, then we go into shooting, and then we get into more sets and stuff like that. Uh, my favorite part about basketball is uh, playing with my team and having fun at practices. Um, we were really young last year. I expect like that we will play more young teams and like 
we'll be able to grow and like because we had such younger people on our team last year we'll be able to grow from that and like have an either even tighter bond I think we can make it pretty far I don't know how far exactly but I think we can if we like stick with it we can make it pretty far I think the team could go to districts Um, my favorite thing about cheer is my team. We're really close. We're like one big family. And we work well together. Well, my favorite thing at cheer is kind of like getting to know people and like the backgrounds and everything and becoming friends with them. Bases, um, more specifically, will need like strength and good technique. There's like a lot of things that like you need, like strength and like flexibility. Um, sometimes before rounds like during the competition I will like exclude myself and pray and like talk to myself pretty much. We all usually go sit in a, not sit, but we'll stand in a circle and we'll pretty much talk each other up and prepare ourselves. I think our season since I'm a senior this year will be pretty good. Thanks Miles. Today for sports, boys, girls, varsity are bowling today. Junior varsity cheer at Jensen. Boys varsity wrestling are playing at home, and girls varsity are playing at Jensen. Tomorrow for sports, girls, freshmen, JV, and varsity play at home. Freshmen go against Sparta, JV and varsity go against Big Rapids. So go and support our Red Hawks. Now let's switch it back to Maddie and Emily with more news. Thanks, Ryan and Morgan. And we'd like to apologize for the audio issues we're having, but unfortunately, it's technical and there's not much we can do. But, you know, I didn't realize we had so many winter sports offered here at Cedar. Yeah, and although I love watching winter sports, I miss being able to go outside and not having to start my car 10 minutes before I have to leave. It's a good thing all those sports are inside. It's been extra chilly these past few weeks. Let's hope the weather takes a turn, and not for the worse. Let's send it over to Jared for the upcoming forecast. Hello Cedar Springs, Michigan. My name is Jared Hawes and I'm here with your weather. We're going to start off with today's breakdown with a at 3 p.m. around 45 and a little bit cloudy. You might see the sunshine in a little bit. Moving into 6 o'clock around dinner time, it's going to be about 42. Then about when people are going to bed, it's going to be about 38. And then at right around midnight, 11 o'clock, it's going to be 37. So moving into our eight-day forecast for the week, we are looking at a chance of light rain tomorrow as our first chance of precipitation. And moving into around, right around Christmas time, we're going to experience some snow over here. But however, it is not going to accumulate because of our below average temperatures. And breaking down the week by temperature, Wednesday is going Friday 37, moving into the weekend, it's going to be 35 on Saturday, Sunday 34, Monday 32, Tuesday about 33, and Wednesday about 36. So for those who are hoping for a white Christmas, it is just not looking too great because of those below average temperatures. But for those looking for something to do on the break, it would be a great time to get out and enjoy snowboarding at Cannonsburg or anywhere for that matter because they make their own snow and it's warm outside so you don't got to worry about the cold you can just go on throw a coat on have some fun with some friends enjoy the outdoors back to you Maddie well that's Michigan for you I didn't really care much about the next few days I was just really hoping for a white Christmas yeah without snow it just doesn't feel like Santa's coming to town how about we jingle bell rock ourselves over to Porter He's got a great Christmas video for us. That's all I want for Christmas. Take it away, St. Nick. Everybody loves Christmas, but how much do they really love it? We asked our little helpers some Christmas questions, and here are their answers. My favorite Christmas movie is National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. My favorite Christmas movie is Polar Express. My favorite Christmas movie is probably, what's it, Christmas Vacation? Uh, my Christmas plans are to open presents with my family and just hang out with them and have a good time. We'll be in Arkansas. 
I don't know what we're gonna do there, but. Uh, plans for Christmas, we're gonna open presents like at 11 in the morning and then sit around and watch movies all day. Some of my favorite Christmas traditions are um, we cook cookies and like bake in the morning before Christmas and like when, before we open our presents. We, every single time late night on Christmas we go see a movie. Every Christmas Eve my grandparents come over and we have crab legs and stuff so it's just like a really nice fancy meal. I go to my grandma's every year and open presents and eat dinner there. This Christmas I asked for some Apple AirPods and a new TV. I asked for a bunch of makeup. I normally put my Christmas tree up after Thanksgiving. We usually put our Christmas tree up about the sometime within the week after Thanksgiving. We used to put it up like right after Thanksgiving, but now we put it up later because we got a cat. I love Christmas music. I can listen to it all year round. Oh, I love Christmas music, but I don't start listening to it till after Thanksgiving. People who listen to it before are weird. <laughs> Garbage. If you play it any day but the 23rd, the 24th, or the 25th, <laughs> you need to go somewhere. Sounds like kids are really getting into the Christmas spirit. Wow, I really just love Christmas. Do you have any special family traditions? Well, Christmas morning, my grandma and aunt come over and we cook this big pancake breakfast. It's my favorite part of the day. But Emily, did you ask for anything special this year? Well, I really want a good speaker and a nice cozy pair of sweatpants. But before we get to Christmas, we have to get through the rest of this week. Well, it may seem like forever, but we'll make it. In the meantime, make sure to share that Christmas spirit with your fellow Red Hawks. And that's all we have time for on today's episode of CSTV. Merry Christmas, everyone.